Hello everybody, my name is Jeremy Kaldapsky, and today I'm going to try to create a real-time strategy game similar to Warcraft, the original one, uh, using Visual Basic 6.0, and the challenge is to create this game in one hour. Now, um, I was 45 minutes into this video, and I pushed one of the function keys that apparently for the video recorder means cancel recording without saving. So I just blew off some steam and figured I'd give this another try. Um, originally, uh, in the first video, I said that I had not um, previously planned this project out because the, the challenge that was presented to me was to create this in an hour armed with nothing based only off of memory well, I can't really make the same claim now because I just spent 45 minutes working on this exact same thing. I deleted the old stuff, but I have sort of run through some of it once. So with that in mind, this is as close as I can get to approaching this completely from scratch. Now, um, I decided not to throw out the uh, artwork because that actually ate up a lot more time than I thought it was going to take up during the last project. but or during the last video. I did walk through all of this uh, making of this stuff. Uh, it's not pretty. I'm using paint, but as part of this challenge, for one, I'm not supposed to reference any old code that I've ever done. I have to do everything off of memory, and I'm also not supposed to use any tools other than Visual Basic 6.0. Well, I'm using paint because, for those of you watching, if you can do it in paint, you can do this with anything. You use Photoshop or uh, I don't know, anything, 3D Studio, you can make the stuff look really good. But I'm just going to use paint. Now, I'll run you through really quick what I did before we start the project, just so that everybody's on the same page. Most um, really crappy games that you see online, like that are made by students and stuff, you, Visual Basic gets a bad rap. If you go on YouTube and you look up Visual Basic games, 90% of the stuff you find is half-completed tic-tac-toe games. The reason for that is because most of the people that post stuff, that's projects for like some high school class they took. And for some reason, everybody seems to think that the stuff they teach you in those high school classes is all that Visual Basic can do. So Visual Basic does get a bad rap for that. Now, most of the games that you see that do have tiles are really crappy. It'll have, there's your, you know, your ground, your land. It'll have some water tossed in here and there. And this is exactly what it's going to look like. And then you'll have a couple trees. You know, it looks terrible. This is pretty much it. And you got a little guy running around somewhere. Well, we want to make this look a little nicer than that. So, the way this works is assuming that... Uh, oh, okay, I'm going to assume that you do have some knowledge of how tiles would work, at least. You know, if you're doing your bathroom, uh, you know, you, you assemble it with tiles. Well, the game's going to be done the same way. So, you don't have to draw a million trees. You draw one tree, and you can use it everywhere. So, if you were to have water... Instead of just having water, um, I've come up with something. So let's say you had, you're looking at the tile that's water, and the tile next to it has land. So instead of just drawing this center tile, this is actually a three by three section of tiles right here. Instead of drawing this one, it'll draw this one because there's a little bit of land next to it. Which for you guys at home who are going to spend more time on something like this, you know, you might make a shore, some sand, who knows what. But the idea is it's going to look a little nicer. It's going to change what picture it draws based on what's around it. I did the same thing with trees. Um, this is what will be drawn if to the north, south, east, and west there are no trees. Then every combination of there possibly being a tree, it'll draw a different one. Like for example, if there is a tree, I'm just going to grab this rough so it's not going to look so great. If there was a tree only to the to the west, it's going to draw this image. And for the one that was next to it, when it draws that one, it knows there was a tree to the east. So when it draws its picture, it looks something like this. So the finished picture looks a lot nicer than just, you know, two trees next to each other. Now because it's got all the combinations, you get densely packed trees, which again, I'm just grabbing it rough so it's not going to look so great you get the idea, but densely packed trees where it's surrounded on all four sides you know, by forest. Wow, I did a bad job of grabbing that, but you get the idea. It would look a lot nicer if I wasn't just roughly grabbing it. 
So that's how the trees were made. Um, rocks I just did generically because I was running out of time at that point in the other video. Uh, you could do the rocks the same way so that the rocks change depending on how much rock is around it. Um, I did a farm, a ghetto farm here. I did a ghetto barracks because I'm copying off of Warcraft 1. Um, for the main building, I was running out of time so I just put a big circle. Um, started making a little guy which is very pixelated and crappy. Just gave him a blue shirt. Figured this, we'll just copy him and we'll put a red shirt on him to represent a bad guy soldier. And then, I don't know, we'll take away the sword and put a yellow shirt on him. He'll be a worker or something. I don't know. We'll get to that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of notifi notifications and stuff that pop up. You can ignore all of that. This, I took this, put it into a bitmap called Data, which is the exact same image. It just, uh, I made sure that the very top corner, the edge, the image lines up to that. And I'll use that a little later. So let's get started. Now you're going to notice my Visual Basic 6.0 looks a little different than yours might and that's because under Tools and Options I use the Advanced SDI Development Environment. You click that to turn it on and it just changes the way some of the stuff works. You don't have to declare all of your variables. I'm usually too lazy to do that. Uh, well because I'm starting I need to start the timer at one hour. Let's see how well this goes the second time through. Okay, now um, I will explain some of the things some of the things I won't just because I'm trying to think of a lot of stuff at once. Again, it's sort of unrehearsed. It frustrates me that I lost 45 minutes of video, but nothing I can do about that. I'm going to make a copy of my first picture and picture two. This is one of the few things I'm actually going to bother to rename it, just so I remember what it is. This is for the data or for this particular image here, data image. Open it, copy and paste, whoops, sweet. auto size is true, and then visible is false, I don't want to be able to see it. Um, I, I want the image to be able to resize, so I will go to forum, or form resize, and say picture one dot width equals scale width minus like 10 I don't know let's see okay it does scale it's a little sloppy but it works um, let's see we're gonna need some variables I think last time I did variables first which makes more sense but um, I don't comment most things and I don't declare what type they are got map with map height. Um, we're going to be using tiles, so let's see, dim tile, I don't know what, let's say 100 by 100 limit. And it's cold in here, so it's getting hard to type, and I hate typing on laptop keyboards. Now this tile A and tile B represents the X and Y coordinates to this, where what you want it to look like. Now, I'm doing this uh, just because later on that's going to save me some work. So like if you want that tile to look like this, that's going to be coordinates 0, they always start at 0, 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and then that's the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate is 0. Um, yeah, I'm getting invited to play games, don't have time. Uh, what's next? Um, I've already blanked out. Oh, here we go. Um, I need to be able to shift the tiles around as I move the screen and I need to be able to select tiles at some point. What I didn't mention this time around is that I'm starting off making the editor. Um, a lot of times for these games it's a lot easier to start off with your level editor because in the end you can already load and save maps. There we go. Okay. Um, just the chiming doesn't drive me crazy. Form. Yes, yes, no worries. Form load. Where are we at? Always start off with a randomized timer because at some point in every program you're going to need to have random numbers, it seems like. 
Um, 